from Colorado's high definition news leader. This is 9 News at 6. You may be posting things that are made public without your knowledge. A new feature on Facebook is raising privacy concerns. It's enough to draw the attention of lawmakers in Washington. And good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Kobrick. I'm Adele Arakawa. Four U.S. senators, including one from Colorado, sent a letter to Facebook today. The letter is in reaction to new social plugins on Facebook. Those plugins allow users to interface with dozens of websites and share with friends. Facebook calls it instant personalization as users browse the web. Nine News reporter Jamie Kim joins us from the information. Center Jamie Colorado Senator Michael Bennett says he's concerned about the privacy of Facebook users. He is Adele. He and senators from New York, Alaska, and Minnesota. They're concerned these social plugins automatically put information on public websites that the user might want to keep private. They say Facebook needs to make it easier for people to control what information they want to share. I use Facebook um, several times a day. Christine Handel can tell you everything about Facebook. Um, they've changed their interface, they've changed their web design, um, they've changed the interaction between you and other people. It's the latest change, the social plugins, that she's not sure about. I do think it is an invasion of your privacy. Social plugins allow users to like or recommend topics on more than 75 websites. Facebook rolled out the feature last week. The problem is that they're turned on without your knowledge and you may be posting things that are made public without your knowledge. Christine had to go to her privacy settings under applications and websites and turn off the option. Senator Michael Bennett says this is the problem. Users should be allowed to opt into the feature instead of having to opt out. The decision ought to be yours and the problem that we're, we're going to have is that there are a lot of people that actually don't know these changes have been made and and they may not want the entire world to know where they've been. Facebook says users do have control because they have to click on like or recommend before their name and picture are posted. A spokesperson responded to the senators today saying, quote, we look forward to meeting with your staff soon to explain how the collective change we announced last week will result in more control for users not less. As a person who can tell you a lot about Facebook, Christine has this advice for other users. My suggestion is that, you know, every once in a while, once a month, once every few weeks, you check your privacy settings and see if there's a new control in there that maybe you didn't know about. Now, the Federal Trade Commission confirmed today that the agency has already been examining the privacy and data collection practices of Facebook and other social networks. Adele, we've said it before, while you expect some privacy, if you're going to put something on these social networking sites, be comfortable with it going public. Exactly. All right, Jamie Kim in the Information Center. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Facebook has an estimated 400 million users worldwide. A liquor store owner blames city cutbacks for increased crime around his store, including a fatal shooting Sunday night. The owner of Ruskin Liquor says violence has increased since the city of Colorado Springs turned off a streetlight in front of his business. In February, the cash-strapped city turned off 8,000 streetlights to save money. Police say since then, burglaries and robberies have increased 7% compared to the same period last year. As for Sunday shooting, police think that it was not a random act of violence. That is really, uh, you know, something we're concerned about is uh, what, what exactly uh, led up to this shooting and uh, why, you know, this particular person. The city of Colorado Springs estimates it will save $1.2 million this year in energy and maintenance for streetlights. The city will turn a streetlight back on for anyone willing to pay between $100 and $240 a year. A former English teacher at the Collegiate Academy in Littleton was sentenced today for sexually assaulting a male student from 2003 to 2005. 41-year-old Linda Trabuco was sentenced to sex offender intensive supervision probation for five years to life. Life. She must also register as a sex offender. Trabuco pled guilty in February to sexual assault of a child by a person in a position of trust. The Lake County Sheriff's deputy who shocked 30 students at a high school job fair earlier this month has resigned. Lake County Sheriff Ed Holt says Deputy John Ortega resigned about two weeks ago. Ortega could face charges for using a taser on the students at Lake County High School on April 8th. Sheriff Holt says the students asked Ortega to shock them.
Two students received minor burns and were treated at a nearby hospital. Five months after a shootout between police and bank robbers in Westminster, we're hearing from one of the officers who was caught in the middle. This was the scene last November 19th when police fired 105 rounds at a car they'd been pursuing. Minutes earlier, the man and woman in that car had, had robbed a bank and shot at an officer who was in pursuit. They also fired shots at Deputy Police Chief Tim Carlson grazing his hip. Going through my mind was, this guy's out there pointing a gun at me. I gotta stop that. And this story, by the way, is not about me. This story is about nine, ten very courageous officers who went out and, and did some very courageous things that day. We hire good people, we train them exceptionally well, we give them the equipment and the tools they need, and then we trust them to go out and do their job. Another officer was also shot in the hip. He has also recovered. Carlson says it's a miracle that more people weren't hurt. A couple from Golden has been ordered to pay more than $14,000 in restitution for stealing money from the nonprofit sponsor of a youth football program in Jefferson County. William and Kelly Hillborn were on the board of directors for the Golden Applewood Midget Football Association. From 2006 to 2007, they withdrew cash, wrote checks, and used the association's debit card for personal expenses. Both pled guilty to felony theft and have been sentenced to probation. Lawmakers tonight are hearing from the public about a plan to regulate how medical marijuana is distributed. Hundreds of people have crowded into the Capitol to comment. Senator Chris Romer is the sponsor of House Bill 1284, which would require dispensaries to pay fees to cover the cost of their regulation. In addition, the measure would allow cities and towns to forbid dispensaries. Those two provisions worry medical marijuana supporters. Ultimately, the bottom line is this is not what the voters voted for, and if this is going to be in their community, they ought to have an opportunity to vote. We need to allow mom and pop operations and small businesses in Colorado to thrive. Uh, some of the fees that are being proposed by Senator Romer would absolutely destroy small businesses in Colorado, and the less small businesses there are, the worst access to medicine patients have. Lawmakers are expected to decide next week whether to send, the, to send to the November ballot a proposal to ban dispensaries altogether. The Colorado Department of Labor and Employment and the Department of Defense are teaming up to help veterans find jobs. Several state employees, who are also National Guard and Reserve members, watched as state labor and military leaders announced a series of job fairs at National Guard armories across Colorado. State officials call the effort unprecedented. This is a patriotic state, and the young men and women who serve, it, it's just amazing. They wouldn't be doing that if they didn't have the support of our congressional delegation, our state legislature, and just the citizens of Colorado. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says the unemployment rate of Iraq and Afghanistan era veterans was 14.7 percent last month. The first job fair for veterans will be held May 15th at the Cherry Creek Presbyterian Church in Inglewood, 10 to 4. Still ahead on 9 News at 6. Anytime there's a severe storm, we have to decide which one we're going to target. An ambitious new effort by more than 150 scientists to better understand tornadoes. Also ahead, Governor Ritter's new role in his school's campaign to win a commencement speech delivered in person by President Obama. Windy and warm Wednesday, a preview of summer with highs in the 80s. Winter returns for some areas by the weekend. I'm Kathy Saban. I'll tell you when the next storm arrives. And a Hall of Fame quarterback endorses Tim Tebow. It's back, the 10 for $10 Mix or Match sale, only at King Supers. It's your chance to stock up and save on a great selection of family favorites. Get 10 for 10 savings on the kinds of things you buy all the time. And because it's Mix or Match, you can mix them up any way you like. Mix five of these with five of these, or eight of these with two of these, or seven of these with one each of these. It's your choice during the 10 for $10 Mix or Match sale at King Supers. Get more value for the way you live. Small business is enormously important, and it's enormously important that we help them. 80% of the jobs that are going to drag us out of this great recession that we're in are jobs that are going to be created by small business. But small business still can't get access to credit. If they can't hire people, we're never going to be able to address the unemployment rate. It is a choice between whether you want to invest in bureaucracies or you want to invest in people. It's just common sense because this is where you're going to make the biggest impact. 
I'm Michael Bennett. Prove this message. If insurance companies had their way, they'd place limits on the value of an injured child's lost ability to run. A father's lost ability to pay for his daughter's education. A mother's lost strength to hold her child. At Anderson Hemet Levine, we make insurance companies pay victims the true value of life experiences lost. And if you suffer a loss, we can help you too. Call us. Anderson Hemet and Levine. Justice for Victims begins here. Hey, Molly Moeller here. No giggling. So my parents had a sense of humor. Listen, finding time for the dentist isn't always easy. Even for me, a hard-working career tooth. Well, I'm here to tell you, I found the perfect dentist at Perfect Teeth. They have locations all over Colorado, and they handpick each dentist so they're experienced and gentle. I don't want any drill-wielding brute coming near me. Perfect Teeth even has a dental plan that's as low as $6.25 a month. Hey, I didn't get this good looking all by myself. Call Perfect Teeth today. Gotta run. I've got a date with a wisdom tooth. I like my men brainy. It is considered the largest and most ambitious effort ever to understand tornadoes. Tomorrow morning, more than 150 scientists will embark on a six-week project called Vortex 2. Nine News reporter Kevin Torres caught up with a few of the scientists in Boulder as they put the finishing touches on their instruments. It's going to make a little bit of noise, guys. The men and women working on Vortex 2 I'm a team player. spent the last six weeks uh, My wife is starting to miss me a little. Fine-tuning their vehicles. Um, we're trying to button up all the last screws. And building new tornado pods. And these are instrumented weather stations, basically, which are going to be deployed of the tornado and what we're trying to get here is we're trying to get low-level information inside of the tornado so we're trying to get the wind speeds and temperature one meter off of the ground the pods cost about three thousand dollars a piece and will collect low-level wind measurements so this will help with designing buildings and understanding better how wind damages houses and other types of structures perhaps the most interesting toys the vortex team has is its four instrumented vehicles <laughs> yeah there is so much science behind each one of them it would be hard for me to explain getting out there and learning about the Tornadoes is a real excitement for me. So here's project director Joshua Worman, who pretty much designed them. Dual polarization, dual frequency systems, which is a lot of jargon for saying we can understand the difference between rain and hail, take a lot of different measurements, but also scan very, very fast through tornadic thunderstorms. Well, everything's closed now. The importance of measuring the difference between rain and hail will allow the team to better understand how tornadoes form. Questions, you know, you think we might have answered by now, but really they're very difficult questions. With the data they collect, the team hopes it will be able to make better prediction times. The average warning time is about 13 minutes right now. If we could get that to 20 or 30 minutes or even more, then people would have more time to seek shelter. Okay. Because this project is so unique, an IMAX film crew is following the team's progress. Okay, cutting. Yeah, good. I They'll travel through a handful of states, including Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Anytime there's a severe storm, we have to decide which one we're going to target. The storm chasing part of the project should be complete by mid-June. Good luck. In Boulder, this is Kevin Torres, 9 News. The $10 million project was mostly funded by the National Science Foundation and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. A group of Denver High School students got to tell Governor Ritter what to do today. They directed the governor during a video shoot. The short video will be posted on YouTube to help get out the vote for the Denver School of Science and Technology. The Stapleton School is one of six nationwide competing to win a visit and commencement speech from President Obama. There's just a variety of things they do here that really make it the kind of school that we should pay attention to in the 21st century. And we hope the president will uh, acknowledge that as well by coming here and giving the commencement speech. The top three vote-getting schools will have their applications sent to President Obama's desk. He will then choose at which school he will speak. To vote, look for the link online on the online version of the story at 9news.com. An even warmer day before the next storm coming up in Kathy's forecast. Also ahead, Carmelo Anthony says he was misunderstood. Since we introduced Aerosmith Dream On, the new scratch game from the Colorado Lottery, seems everyone's getting into it. Meteorologist Kathy Saban joins us from outside, enjoying a beautiful springtime day while she can. That's right. <laughs> and tomorrow, Adele, will feel like summer and then winter returns. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly. not so good. I know. There's always that other shoe that's got to mm -hmm. fall, right? And just in time for the weekend. Outside, as you mentioned, it's beautiful, beautiful springtime afternoon with partly sunny skies. Temperatures still nice and warm along the front range, near 70 for many areas. We do have concerns for high fire danger. The wind's picking up across the western slope. Red flag warning remains in 
in effect through 8 o'clock tonight. We do have some gusty winds expected tonight and again tomorrow in advance of a cold front headed in from the west. High wind warning for the western slope tomorrow. High wind watch for areas south and east of Denver out on the plains. Not a whole lot to show you on the radar just yet. There's just the leading edge of a little band of clouds coming through. But as we look at the bigger picture, that's where we can really see that storm gathering strength off to the west of us. It'll be here tomorrow night into Thursday morning and Thursday will be cooler and cloudy with a chance of a rain or snow shower tomorrow. A whole lot of wind coming in from the southwest. A few high and mid-level clouds about the area tonight, but really a lovely evening after a beautiful day. Quiet weather expected this evening. Cold start to the day. Our low this morning 29. Our high officially 68. We are in the mid 70s here in downtown Denver right now enjoying 64 degrees. Winds picking up a bit out of the southeast. It's breezy in the backyard, but comfortable 68 now. Handful of other temperatures this hour include Greeley at 66, Highlands Ranch at 62, Parker and Franktown in the mid 50s. As we look at the temperature map for tomorrow, gusty southwest winds will pump temperatures up into the 70s for much of eastern Colorado, western Nebraska, and Kansas. Storm system coming our way is essentially going to be pushed northward by this big blocking ridge of high pressure. It's going to become cut off from the main flow, the main low, and what it's going to do is send little weather disturbances over Colorado from Thursday afternoon through Monday. So find the jacket, find the umbrella. You won't need it tomorrow, but you will Thursday through the weekend. High and mid-level clouds on the increase tonight and then again tomorrow, but basically a quiet 24-hour period minus the wind. For Forecast low temperatures tonight, upper 30s, low 40s for eastern Colorado, a little milder down south, 20s and 30s in the mountains. Again, with the wind really picking up west of the divide, and that wind's going to take temperatures into the mid 80s for southeastern Colorado and will really be an issue for some of the higher passes. Two hands on the steering wheel tomorrow afternoon. City forecast tonight, fair skies, breezy and cool are low 42. Tomorrow, bus stop forecast may, may not even need a sweater or jacket. It should be very mild in the morning and a very lovely day coming up tomorrow. 80 degrees. The winds usher in that front tomorrow night. We have the chance of a rain or snow shower Thursday. Thursday a whole lot cooler. Friday isolated showers. The next wave arrives Saturday with a chance of rain and snow and then rain in your Sunday forecast. So once again, Adele and Mark, kind of a four-day weather event uh, with a storm that's cut off to our north this time. Wow. Okay then. We'll get your timing kind of on a better track the next weekend, we hope. I know. I know. Well, hey, it's only Tuesday. This ah, there you go. We'll see Hopefully how things can change. Yep. <laughs> All right, thanks. Drew's joining us. You know you got to be pretty good to earn that label ace when they call you an ace. You do, and if they handed out the Cy Young Award right now, Ubaldo Jimenez would, be the would guy, win. Wouldn't he? Yeah. Unfortunately, there's still 142 <laughs> games to go <laughs> right. in that stinking baseball season. Rockies flamethrower Ubaldo Jimenez has a chance to become the Major League's first five-game winner tonight. Jimenez looks loose and confident, hanging around the batting cage in warm-ups, and why not? He enters the game with the Arizona Diamondbacks with a consecutive scoreless inning streak of 16 and two-thirds. Carmelo Anthony doesn't feel the need to apologize to his teammates. Nuggets trail the Utah Jazz 3-1 in their first round NBA playoff series. Game 5 is tomorrow night. Melo complained over the weekend that he felt he was trying to win the series all by himself. When I said I needed some more, I think it was took out of, you know, out of context. Um, you know, I, I'm, I need help trying to figure this thing out. You know, I, I always told you I can't do it by myself, so, and I don't want to try to do it by myself. I don't, I don't been there. I didn't try to do that before. It don't work. You know, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be able to do this by myself without the mother guys out there. So when I said I needed help, I was coming from that standpoint of, you know, wanting everybody to get together and do it together. The jazz rallying I think a lot of people like I said earlier, a lot of people took what I said when I said I needed help, you know, the wrong way. You know, but I talk to my teammates, they know, you know, what I mean. We talk basketball every day. So they know I'm not, you know, single handed pointing nobody out, you know, individually. I'm in it, I'm in it with them. You know, I'm not saying I'm playing. The best that I can play, so I'm, I'm going to win. We all losing the game. Mr. Perfect, Tim Tebow, will practice with the Broncos for the first time this Friday. Because of his unconventional delivery, the Bronx have been strongly criticized for drafting the former University of Florida Heisman Trophy winning quarter. But Tebow might be better than all the critics think. 
I liked him. I've had a chance to get to know him here in recent months at some various events that we've been a part of. And I was a little surprised uh, that, that he went as high as he did until you really take a look at, at where it is that he went. And I think that with Josh McDaniel and you know him making that selection and him being in charge, him being in charge of the offense, he has a vested interest in, in this young man doing well. And I think because of that, uh, Tim's going to have a great opportunity to have success. And you know what I believe is that you know, there's been there's been questions. Okay, is he going to be a quarterback? Is he not going to be a quarterback? And you know, I hope it does work out for him at quarterback because that's what he wants to do. But he's one of those guys you just don't bet against. And so, if it doesn't work out there, there's not a doubt in my mind that he's going to be a great NFL player and contribute uh, a lot to the future success of the Denver Broncos. I just think that he was drafted, and I think McDaniels has a plan for him. Uh, I don't know what that plan is, but you don't take someone with that pick without having a pretty clear vision as to how he's going to be used. And, you know, those are the type of guys. I mean, when you talk about teams that go on and win championships, you win those with guys like Tim Tebow. And that's why, at the end of the day, no matter how you break it up or how you slice it, uh, I like I like the pick because he's going to be a contributor. And Troy Aikman has a little bit of credibility on that topic. He led the Cowboys to yeah. three Super Bowl yeah, championships. Yeah, how about that? The whole knock against him is he has kind of this baseball. Swings throw, it he around, swings his right? Arm back, and but they think they Careful. can fix it. Well, that. he's oh, already. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's fixed it already himself. <laughs> <laughs> Swigs back, knocks yeah. the person out next to him. Adele's got a bloody Stop nose, it. all because oh. the Broncos drafted Tim Tebow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you won't see me here anymore either. Thanks, Drew. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sunday in May, 20 winners will take home cash prizes in the $50,000 Punch for a President giveaway at the Isle Casino Hotel Blackhawk. Stocks took a nosedive today over concerns that debt problems in Greece and Portugal could threaten the global economic recovery. The Dow lost 213 points, its worst drop in nearly three months. Life is filled with this and that. There's a pizza ready like this. For just that. It's this. Little Caesars hot and ready pizza. And that's that. Pizza pizza. Build Fair skies, temperatures in the lower 50s by 9 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, not bad, but that wind is going to pick up tomorrow. The good news is it'll be a warm day uh. with those gusty winds before the bottom falls out on Thursday. <laughs> Chance of a rain or snow shower. No accumulation, but a high of only 49 Thursday. Ooh. Friday oh, doesn't man. look too bad. Just a oh. miserable pattern, you know? I'm sorry. You, just really, the messenger, Mr. Cobra. You gotta, just you gotta, the you messenger. you got to talk to somebody. Yeah, we know you got a line. You can swing yeah. this way. And just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boss just sent me a message. Do not <laughs> knock out the cold. Show Kathy Tim Tebow's yeah. throwing motion. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Thanks, We're Adele. We're back at 9 to everybody. <laughs> the 9 News Network, where news comes first. M.9news.com. It's all right here in the palm of your hand. Nine News Closed Captioning brought to you by McDonald Hardwoods. Save up to 25% on a huge variety of woods from around the world. Visit our Denver showroom at First and Santa Fe and find the hardwood floor you've always wanted. Maxim Secret Coach.